Hello, I'm back with another resin testing video, and this time it is a GradKit 8K rigid resin. And these test objects are printed and sent to me for the testing by the Philosyn company. Now, this resin is designed to be used with the 8K printers too. So I have some figures here printed in 4K and 8K resolution, but most of the test objects are printed on Illigo Mars 3, that's the 4K resolution printer. And I will repeat my regular mechanical testings and also I will do some, I don't know, dropping tests and uh, those are tests which I usually do now with these uh, resin testings. This is content of the box and let's start with analyzing these exposure test cards. This is the exposure time in seconds on 4K and 8K resin printer. Here the text is almost completely missing, here only some letters are missing, but between 2 and 3 seconds everything is acceptable. And uh, according to the specifications, actually between two and a half and three and a half is the suggested exposure time. This object is for measuring the shrinking in X, Y and Z direction. And uh, I will always try to measure to avoid the elephant foot. These are the values in millimeters for the X, Y and Z direction. They should be rounded numbers. These are for the holes, but the uh, values in percentage I will show you in the results part. Now let's see the difference between 4K and 8K resin printers. The figures with this red line are printed in 8K resolution. On these bigger figures it is really hard to see any difference between two objects. While watching only with my eyes without any magnification, even on these smaller figures I cannot really see the difference between two objects. Let's take an even closer look of this traveler but under bigger magnification. Actually now under very big magnification I can see some difference between two objects. This one is in 8K and here I can see more details on the face for example or on this bag but uh, with bare eyes it is very hard to see the difference. And now my regular throwing test, which I'm usually doing these uh, videos. And I will drop this uh, traveler from the two and a half meters to the ceramic tiles and to see which part will break off or maybe they will be in one piece. Okay, so maybe this testing method looks very brutal, but I'm repeating this now with these resin videos and actually very rare, but there are materials which can survive this. In this case, no, <laughs> almost all travelers stay without uh, two legs. Only this one has uh, one leg, but uh, definitely this object cannot survive this throwing test. This is a tensile or pulling test uh, with the horizontally printed objects. The smallest cross section area is 4x4 four four millimeters, and these are vertically printed objects, same cross section size. And this is what I like with the resin, so they don't have that uh, layer adhesion weakness. And now the shear stress, two sided shear stress, diameter of this test object is 5 millimeters. And it didn't share just like uh, regular filaments, it, it uh, explodes and uh, it was very hard to find uh, all parts. And this is C point bending test. Uh, these are the loads one test in progress and I'm replacing them one by one. And also I will measure the deformation under the given load after 1, 30 and 60 seconds. So this is under 5 kilograms and this is under 10 kilograms. And I can see some minimal permanent deformation on this test object. And now the IZ impact test with these uh, notched objects and a half kilogram hammer. Rigid resin. Zero position. And now let's analyze the footage. Actually these are two edge positions of the hammer and uh, with difference in height I can calculate the breaking energy. And now the temperature test, and I have uh, several tests in the progress. I have some PTG filaments too here. This is test in the oven, and this part is speeded up 25 times. I want to record the temperature of the first deformation. And very interesting, I couldn't see visually deformation on this uh, resin object. Only at approximately 170 degrees Celsius it cracked, which I noticed only later or analyzing the footage. On 200 degrees Celsius, I stop the experiment. Now let's analyze the objects. My well, PTG was overmounted anyway, but uh, here you can see the crack on this uh, resin object, and it is elastic a little bit, so flexible. But when I start with the bending, it snaps into two parts. 
And now my standard creep test to measure the deformation under the constant load, which will be the distance between two reference surfaces. And I uh, have uh, several experiments in the progress, so this uh, resin will be now in this test with some PETG filaments. For more accurate measuring, I am locking the position. 1634. I measure them every day and this is the deformation after 6 days. And this is the best resin I tested with this creeping experiment. And now the torque or twist test uh, with the 6 mm in diameter object. And I usually I try to record the load at 90 degree angle and the maximum load. But usually the resin is too rigid, I, I cannot make a 90 degree turn. In that case only the maximal torque will be recorded. And 0 0.5. Well, this was really rigid. Now let's analyze our results and this Excel table you can download from mytechfun.com website. And also I included here the test objects uh, link because uh, several times I'm asked you can download these test objects from the printables. Now uh, it would be very boring to have only the grad kit uh, measured results. So I included here the average resins, actually average non-flexible resins tested on mytechfun.com channel. And let's start with the creep test. And actually these are measured values, the distance between two reference surfaces. Now in the summary table I have recorded only first two days. Anyway, what we need is the difference between two days. This is what we can see here. And actually these are great values. Uh, I checked already all other results and this is the best uh, resin in this uh, creep test. Okay, let's move to the tensile test or pulling test. The smallest cross-section area here is 4 by 4 millimeters. Now, here it was a little bit weaker compared to the other average resins. And interesting, vertically imprinted objects, uh, here it was stronger. But this is actually not new. I experienced this, that uh, with the resin printings, we don't have that weakness of the layer tension. And even sometimes, in most cases, it is even stronger if it is printed vertical, this test object. On shear stress, it was weaker and it was not shared correctly, it just explode. This is really rigid material. And now that's three point bending test. And again, I included here some uh, values for average resin, but these numbers are only the deformation after 30 seconds. This is more important. And uh, here also it performs very good. Uh, so here you can see the deformation in millimeter for this load after 130 and 60 seconds. And uh, what we can see here that uh, smaller values are better, so less deformation compared to the average resin. Uh, of course, on 10 kilograms, this is still too high load for this material. Uh, well, even 5 kilograms, but here we can see almost horizontal uh, line after 30 seconds. So it, it reduced the creeping here. And this is the torque test you saw really rigid material. I just started with the twisting and on 0 0.5 Newton meters, it snapped, it broke. On impact test, actually it was better compared to the average resin. And on that uh, uh, temperature test, yes, 170 degrees Celsius, but this is not the deformation, only on this temperature the object correct. And then the shrinking test, and here uh, I have some rounded numbers dimensions, I measure them, and here you can see the, the deformation uh, in the percentage, and approximately total average shrinking was 1.4%. Uh, now quick conclusions for the end. From mechanical strength aspect, in most cases it's a little bit weaker compared to the average resin materials I tested on this channel. Well, actually, except in that bending or creep test or even impact test, which is some kind of bending only with the impact, uh, if you need this kind of load, in that case, this material may be good for you. It is very rigid and it will break suddenly. You saw especially that in that uh, torque or twist test. It is great for printing in figures, even in 8K, we will get really nice small details, but it is very hard to see them with the bare eyes. This is my experience with the GradKit uh, Rigid Resin. If you have some additional, you know, free lines in the comment section. Thank you for watching and um, happy printing!